Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Ted Harris. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our monthly webinar series. Um, before we get started here this morning, I got a couple couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, for those of you that have not attended our webinar series in the past, we normally do it the first Tuesday of each month. Uh, with the with the July 4th holiday here in, in, in July, we uh, we opted to, to do it a week later, but um, uh, this is something we do on a on a regular basis. We bring in uh, normally we'll bring in members uh, such as Avail Technologies or government agency partners to offer a wide range of uh, totally interesting topics to our membership to take advantage of. So if you've joined us in the past, thank you for uh, being on here again this morning. And if this is your first time, thanks for uh, thanks for being a part of it. Uh, you're going to be, as an attendee, uh, you're going to be on mute for the entire portion of our presentation today. Uh, with that being said, we, you still can ask questions uh, by using the, the chat feature in GoToWebinar. We really encourage you to ask questions with, with the webinars that we've done in the past. Really, the you know, in my opinion, the most um, uh, you know, beneficial ones have been interactive in the sense of there has been questions from the audience and there's that back and forth dialogue. So. Please, uh, if, if something comes up, please ask a question. Um, and what we'll do once we get to the end of the presentation here today is I will moderate any questions that we get back to our back to our presenters. If for some reason we run out of time or or it's really like a specific um, specific question that comes in, I'll make sure that I connect you after the fact to get you an answer. So, um, with that being said, I would like to uh, I'd like to transition here to our presenters today. We have Josh Landis with Avail Technologies, uh, Tom Massette with Dialpad, and, and Mike White with Dialpad. Uh, Avail Technologies is a, is a group that joined our association about a year ago, um, and the PPA actually uses them for some of our IT needs currently, and they've been a great partner in that regard. So um, they're gonna be covering today the future of communications technology, staying ahead of the curve, and Josh, I will pass it off to you. All right, thanks, Ted. Thanks for the introduction. And first of all, I wanna thank everybody for taking the time out of your day and joining us. Um, at Avail, we are, uh, just a little introduction about ourselves, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to the, uh, to the Dialpad team. But uh, uh, at Avail, we are a team of technology procurement and management advisors uh, based out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, we partner with our clients to find the right technology solutions uh, we work with you throughout the life cycle to ensure services are designed, procured, implemented, and fully supported. Uh, next slide. Um, from discovery through design, implementation, and support, we manage every aspect of your technology improvements, leveraging our expertise and professional service to see cost-effective technology solutions that drive your growth. Next slide. So as you see, we procure, implement, and support. Um, some of the verticals that we work in obviously are collaboration and communication, uh, cloud services infrastructure, um, the security uh, vertical, internet connectivity, and networking. Um, with over 300 market leading providers in our portfolio, we are confident we will find and deliver the best solutions for your organizational needs. And uh, today we are focusing on the collaboration and communication piece of your organization. Uh, so, you know, honestly, whenever this topic comes up in conversation with clients, um, one provider consistently bubbles to the top. And uh, with us today is we have some folks from Dialpad who I'd like to introduce, um, Tom and Mike, uh, who will take us through their solution, the Dialpad solution. And um, as, as Ted says, as you have any questions as, as we go through this, um, this uh, presentation, you know, feel free to chat those. Um, and, uh, you know, I always say you don't know what you don't know. So just sit back and hopefully that this is time well spent on your end. So without further ado, I want to turn this over to Tom um, and, and Mike from Dialpad and, and have them walk us through their solution and how it could uh, potentially uh, change your business. Awesome. Uh, Ted, Josh, thank you guys both very much for uh, the introduction. Um, as they both alluded to, uh, my name is Tom Missett. I'm an account executive on the Dialpad team. Uh, and then I also have Mike White, uh, who's one of our senior solutions engineers and will be uh, running us through the product uh, in just a few minutes here. Um, so so to, to Josh's point, uh, especially as you know, we're in an environment where some companies are either hybrid, fully remote, 
you know, there are some that are, are going back fully to the office, but at the end of the day, all of these things together, communication uh, has never been more important. And so as we start to, to uh, walk through some of these slides here, uh, really want to really want to focus on you know how communication has changed over the past 20 30 years and how we're we're able to uh, how we're able to utilize um, some of these new tools as it stands today. All right, so as we walk through here. All right, so looking at how uh, the communication space uh, has evolved, so. Um, you know, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with vendors in this space today. Uh, and again, just wanted to paint a picture of, of this progression and how Dialpad specifically differentiates itself from the pack. So directing your eyes to the left side of this screen, uh, you'll see some recognizable companies such as Cisco, Avaya, Mitel, et cetera. Uh, these are a little bit of the older PBX phones um, that transparently are, are probably better off uh, staying in, in that closet. Why do I say that? Um, it, not only are they expensive, but they be, uh, can become very difficult to manage. So you're buying phone hardware every few years. You need to rely heavily on that vendor to ensure that changes are being made uh, frequently. And, and guys, I've, I've seen it firsthand. Those big hardware refreshes, they send IT teams blood pressure and budget through the roof. Uh, moving more so to the middle of the screen, this is what we call the first gen cloud, which is a combination uh, of both cloud and PBX um, technology. This is where a lot of our direct competitors live. This includes Ring Central, 8x8 Skype, etc. Uh, but a lot of these companies were, were established well before cloud environments were around. So essentially, uh, these companies took that old PBX hardware and they moved it to their closet. So this means that incorporating new technology into their solution, it can become burdensome. Uh, there's regularly scheduled downtime for updates to that specific technology. Uh, and I think what's the most relatable here today is that um, these companies usually are not as strong uh, supporting that mobile workforce. All right, so now moving to the far right side, uh, to Dialpad, we are the only modern cloud communications provider in the space. So we understood that data that's being shared on these phone calls was essential to businesses. So we essentially took that old PBX system and we moved it to the cloud. So by doing this, we've allowed employees to use uh, or to communicate from a range of devices, whether it be that the hardware that you're used to, uh, you can now communicate on your laptops directly through an application, as well as uh, your cell phone through that same application. Um, and so the, the analogy that we like to make here, guys, uh, if, you know, just going back to that on-prem um, uh, platform on the left, uh, if you want to think of it, you know, back in the 1960s, if you wanted to go see a movie, you had to go to a movie theater. Uh, that was all people knew for some time. It was great. It got the job done. Now, in the 80s, you had the ability to br then bring those movies home. So, you know, you can think of Blockbuster. Certainly made things easier for those movie watchers, but it did still have its fair share of drawbacks. And that's that's the first uh, gen cloud comparison. Now, moving to the far right, uh, we like to compare ourselves to companies like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, that now leverage that modern cloud technology and has totally flipped the script. So you can watch Netflix on a variety of devices uh, in um, along with getting a lot of these other tech advancements. AI recommendations are made all the time on Netflix. And so we'll start talking about more about that artificial intelligence, but essentially that's what Dialpad has done with the phones. So just before quickly, we'll, we'll hop onto the next slide, but this artificial intelligence that we'll be talking about, it improves the values of calls and meetings by transcribing calls, analyzing each conversation in real time, revealing customer sentiment. So are customers happy? Are they angry? Would you like more insight as to why they're feeling that way? You can provide coaching to inbound contact centers and to outbound salespeople, uh, and as well as collecting action items and key questions on those conversations. So every user now becomes more efficient, effective, and more engaged with customers or business partners. Integration capabilities with tools like Microsoft Teams and your CRMs are all easily uh, doable with Dialpad. 
So with all of that, the detailed analytics from every meeting, phone call, interaction, companies can now get actionable insights to deliver better sales and customer support performance. Okay, so just moving on to this next slide. Um, as you can see here, and, and we've uh, continued to add more transportation and energy companies to, uh, to the Rolodex essentially, but as you can see here, uh, while we might be considered somewhat new to the space, uh, you know, Dialpad was created back in 2011. Our CEO and founder, Craig Walker, has actually had plenty of experience, uh, created Google Voice in addition to other telecom companies. So uh, we know what we're doing and we have uh, the companies and partnerships to, to show it. All right, so just just moving down, we're, we'll keep this high level, um, but this is you know one of the things again that differentiates Dialpad from a lot of the other companies that you may be familiar with already. Uh, we again something unique to Dialpad, we refer to it as split cloud architecture, and so especially within the industries that um, that we're speaking with today, call quality is of utmost importance. Again, as some organizations are adopting hybrid work models or have employees frequently on the road, this is paramount. Within the transportation and energy industry, phones going down means that you're losing revenue and you're losing it fast. So again, we, we utilize the split cloud architecture for a reason. It was designed to store all of the logic in the Google Cloud platform while still positioning our telephony data centers around the globe to deliver these calls videos and or messages so as you can see on the top right hand side of the screen we have four data centers across the united states in san jose dallas chicago and new york city so again this architecture empowers dialpad to provide that hd audio high availability and low latency for customers on every single call and interaction that they have doesn't matter if you're on the move or working remotely dialpad's call quality will be apparent this architecture also allows for seamless scalability, both up and down, depending upon if you have a seasonal business or what have you. So ultimately, if you are 100% uh, based in the cloud, you're giving up a little bit of that quality of service. By being 100% in data centers, you're fighting for bandwidth, which makes it harder to scale. But since Dialpad has split these up, we've essentially built the best of both worlds. We can scale at the same speed as, as some of the big, big competitors in the space, without losing that call reliability. And so, you know, just looking at, uh, you know, some of these customer reviews, uh, we did want to include this unbiased report, uh, which comes directly from real customer reviews. So as you can see here, just looking on the left-hand side of the screen, anytime you're looking at technology, these are typically the topics that are coming up. How easy is it to use? How easy is it for me to administer new users, uh, add integrations, what have you? But most importantly, how much how much are we supported by by these companies? And so, as you can see here, Dialpad is at the top of these lists compared to some of the other big players in the field. And if you look at the bottom, there's a direct quote from one of the head of ITs that we've worked with. From a comparison standpoint, Dialpad uh, can't be compared to a lot of the the vendors that that we take. So. Speaking of the support expectations, you know, again, there's there's nothing more frustrating, and we're on both sides of it here, is, you know, how quickly can you get back to customers? How long do you have to wait on hold? And so just by looking at some of these metrics, you can see the Dialpad is in the top 15% against industry benchmarks and peers. So we care. All right, so just before I pass it over to Mike, I did just want to highlight a customer experience that that should be relatable to the group. Hopefully it, it um, gets you guys thinking about ways that you'd be able to uh, more effectively communicate both internally and externally. So one of the, the customers that has, um, that has worked with Dialpad is called ACI Jet. And these guys are an aviation company that provides corporate aircraft management, charter, maintenance, and ground handling services. They have both in-office employees spread out across a few states along the West Coast, but more importantly, they have reps on the road meeting with potential customers three to five times a week. So at the time, their on-prem Shortel system, it made things difficult. Their IT team had to manage multiple communication systems, both internal and external. So they had Shortel, they had Slack, 
they had Skype, they had Microsoft Teams. And so not only was it difficult to manage, but their call data was not being recorded. So this meant that ACI employees needed to take handwritten notes and then submit those themselves into their CRMs. Some notes were lost, some things were missed, some things had to be asked again down the line. So as we can see, uh, this, this on-prem type of system can make things a little bit more difficult. But most importantly, having this on-prem system meant that their mobile employees were typically giving out their own personal phone numbers. So through Dialpad, ACI, Chet, ACI Jet excuse me, was able to communicate efficiently both internally and externally. Dialpad allows ACI Jet to communicate in a variety of ways. So whether this be through SMS or MMS on their phone, essentially text messages, whether it be voice conferencing or video conference, you can think Zoom, um, or just your standard telephony voice uh, functionality, Dialpad does all of that. So with Dialpad being an application, mobile employees can download the app onto their personal device. That means that employees can keep their personal numbers private, but also if an employee leaves, all of the information that was stored on their personal device is not lost. Call data is automatically uploaded to CRMs, which allows for mobile workers to be more proactive. So guys, I, I did want to stop my piece there. Um, Mike, I am going to pass the presenter rights over to you. I think that it would make sense for us to see a little bit of the product in action so that we can continue learning a little bit more about what Dialpad has to offer. So let me pass this over Great. to you. All right. All right, perfect. So while I while I have the presenter rights now, one of the things I do want to highlight, right, is there is a questions in chat in the application. So if you guys want to put anything that you have in there, we'll try to address those towards the end. But what I hope to, you'll see today is just the simplicity of the dial pad system, both from a end user perspective and then also when we look at a little bit of the administrative perspective as well. So what I'm showing you today is right here on the screen. This is my desktop application for Dialpad. If you notice, it's very tabular, so it's very simple and easy to use. And then on the right-hand side, this is just an image of my mobile device so that you can see that I have the same capabilities from both my desktop and my mobile. With that being said, let's, let's talk about some of these capabilities. Let's start over here with my, my personal information here. So I'm assigned a phone number. I can set my status and things along those lines. I can also see any of my meetings right here. So as uh, Tom mentioned, all in one communications device. So if I needed to have an audio conference, a video conference, I can do all of that. And it's controlled from this simple user interface. I can make phone calls, send and receive text and MMS, MMS messages and start video calls. All of our contacts from the company are gonna be here in the directory. So I no, no longer need to remember whose phone number I need to reach out to. I just need to know their name. I can click and place a call over to them. We also have this channels. And think of channels as just an internal communication tool so that you can send everyone in the organization a message or a subgroup of people a message. And if you'll notice, I have a few that are private as well, so you can have public and private messaging. My favorites here, I have people who I've made my favorites, but if you notice, the only thing I have to do to make someone a favorite is I click the star or I unclick the star. And these are just people who I'm gonna be talking to on a regular basis that I like to have in here. My recents, just like you would see on a mobile device. And then we'll come back to departments and call centers in just a moment. But I have up on the screen, one of the people I like to talk to, if you notice it might be myself. What you can see right here is within our history, because we are transcribing everything and we allow you to send text messages as well, I can see all of my history with the transcription of this uh, conversation. I can see my most recent conversations and what our AI believes to be the uh, purpose of those conversations. All of those things are right here inside of the user application so that you can get to them very easily, including calendar invites and emails. With that being said, I'm going to come back over to a different favorite. 
And I'm just going to place a quick call over here. If you notice, I have this guy who is a favorite as well, another mobile phone. But I can also, if I needed to, this number right here, 4560, I can call from right here within these applications. But at the same time, if I were to come over here, and all if I could remember is 4560. Uh, let's see, who was that? W flight devices, and we'll place a call out to that. So if you notice, the screen is going to be gray while the call is being connected. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top here. Place that on mute, and I'm just gonna say, hi, Mike. I was calling to let you know that your appointment is scheduled for 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'll mute that for a second while that, so that transcription will stop for a second there. But what I want you to see is when the screen connected, it turned purple. Also over here on the mobile device, I have a purple banner across the top. What this purple banner allows me to do is if I needed to run out of the office or Dunkin' Donuts or wherever I currently am working from, I can move this call to my mobile device and everything that I've been doing will continue to go the entire time. Um, as I mentioned for you a moment ago in that relationship view, if you see previous calls, so you'll see the call purpose, calendar and email events, and even down here, some of our CRM integrations that we may offer. Uh, let's go back to the AI for a second, and I'm going to take myself off of mute here, and I'll just come back around to this so that you can see. And then I'm going to take my other device off of mute, and I'll mute this one. And now I'm going to start talking from the other side so that we can see everything that's going on. Actually, I didn't take myself off of mute. Let's try that again and start talking from the other side so that you can see we're going to take notes for you on your behalf so that as you're going through your day-to-day -day interactions, uh, these could be internal or external, we will have your back taking notes so that you don't have to remember everything that you said you were going to do. We think that is very important to help you out. I'm gonna mute this one and I'm gonna unmute this one just really quickly. And so, what if I had this conversation and I, the, towards the end of the conversation, this is a confirmation of your appointment. So before I wrap up the call, I send over a text message confirming the call. And we've confirmed that now that appointment is scheduled for 10 a.m. And now I'm gonna hang up and we can move on with our day. And I can rate the call quality. Now let's talk about what if I needed to see more about that call that I just had. If you see down here, I'm gonna show you the call purpose. I was calling to let you know the appointment has been scheduled. We can do these things and you can then later run reports so that you know exactly what's going on. One of our customers, CR England, they were, they were looking for a solution that would allow them to have communication not only with their external customers, but also their internal drivers. And so the way they're able to do this, when of course they're not driving, is every driver has the Dialpad mobile app on their uh, mobile device. So if I come over to the mobile device, I'm just gonna take a quick look. If you see right here at the top, the most recent call was for this same MW uh, Mike White FD. I'm gonna place a call this time from the mobile over to that device. It's going to give me the option to make a HD call, which is either gonna be over cellular data or Wi-Fi, or if you're in a very poor service area, I can call with carrier mode, which is gonna be that green button. I'm gonna go ahead and do HD for this time. And what you're gonna see is the same thing we saw just a moment ago. This call is going to uh, reach out. 
going to just answer that here. I'm going to mute it on my mobile quickly. But what you see is even though I placed this call from my mobile because I am at a truck stop in Philadelphia, I can still have my transcription, which is going to be going for me at all times, if you would like. And this is just, again, going to help everyone remember all of the things that they needed to A, do, and B, follow up on. So what I can do as well is maybe if I left a Dunkin' Donuts and I was going back to the office and I had to do some paperwork for the day, I can bring this call back over to my, my desktop application the same way I had it a moment ago, and I'll put my desktop on mute. But what I want you to see is this whole thing is still going to be transcribing on your behalf to keep up with all of your action items and to-dos. Uh, so hopefully you guys see how great and powerful this could be. Now, what if after this call, I learned something that I think I wanted to communicate to my entire support team? Well, while I'm on this call, I'm just gonna jump over to my support messaging group, and I'm gonna say, hey, everyone, be on the lookout for X, Y, Z. And that's gonna go over to everyone that's a part of this support group that I am a member of. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna kill this off, and then we can go on to our next steps here. Think about like what I just mentioned there for the mobile capabilities. Um, again, for CR England, they have a driver's huddle, which was very important for them that everyone have the opportunity to participate. And because now we have this running on the mobile device at all times, they're able to drive and pull over and join this huddle whenever available to them. Now let's talk about a little bit of the back office here. Let's say you have an accounting department, which has a group of people that you would like to take similar calls. Well, right here, I can have a group of people, and what I can do is I can set this number up when someone calls, it'll ring everyone in this group, so that maybe someone was calling in to check on their invoice for a previously performed HVAC visit or things along those lines. We can have this set up in a very simple manner. And after I complete that conversation with someone, just like I did on my personal call a moment ago, I have the concept of being able to send a message as well. The only difference is, instead of coming from my personal information here, which is 4030, it would come from the accounting department at 8199. So what that allows you to do is make sure that your customers have the numbers that you want them to reach out to you on versus always calling back to your direct line. Some of us like to take vacations. And so when you're out of the office, you can turn this thing to do not disturb. You can set office hours, things along those lines, so that you don't have to worry about anyone reaching out to you. Um, after departments, let's come back over here and look at our customer service. So if you think about a customer service department, which could be three to five people who are taking very similar calls, scheduling new appointments, customers may have outages, uh, HVAC may have went down, things along those lines, and we want to make sure that we're taking care of them in the best way possible. So I can come over here. I can make myself available to take these calls. And then I can see right in here if there's any live calls. I can see all of the agents who are in here. I am a supervisor as well. So as a supervisor, I could come in here. I can make Sean available. What you noticed is his counter changed. Now he's ready to take calls. But I want to take this call, so I set him back to unavailable. And as we go through this, Keep an eye over here on this dial bot notification. This is just going to be information coming directly to me as a supervisor or as a business owner or anything along those lines so that I'm able to uh, assist and do things along those lines. So I'm going to now place a quick call into this contact center just so we can see what's going on here. Give me one moment.
Now you guys see the call is coming in right here. I can see that it's coming in here on my desktop as well as my mobile device. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer this call. Place this side on mute. I'm calling in because I'm having a heating outage. So now I'll take this side off of mute so that we can see both sides of the conversation. You can see right here that um, that went through. We're transcribing the call and I'm going to say now, oh, I noticed you said your heat is out. Oh, try this again, HVAC out. I set this up to work. AC out. There we go. Um, just had to remember what I put it in as. What you notice is, inst just like we had on my direct personal call, I also now have, instead of just having transcripts, I have the capability of setting up assist cards. And since I set this one up a couple days ago, I forgot exactly how I set it up inside the system. But what you notice is as soon as we triggered that that was an outage, I popped up a assist card, which is then going to help your contact center agents walk customers through either A, uh, scheduling something, or B, maybe an upsell. So what we see right here is, did you know if you sign up for a maintenance plan, you can save on this visit? So we're offering all of those suggestions to agents so that they can service your customers better as they go through. What if in addition to the customer may have called and said, let's mute this side, I'd like to schedule an appointment. What I'd like for you to see here is, it's not just one assist card that your associates could be using. As you're going through having a conversation, you just want to be helpful in the background for your associates who are your front line for all of your customers. These are people who are calling you day in and day out. And what we're going to try to do is offer you some sort of assistance so that you can have your customer service or your brand ambassador department, whatever you choose to call them, service your customers more efficiently. Uh, Dialpad did a study earlier this year, and it was shown that agents that have AI capabilities are able to handle twice the workload of agents who do not have AI capabilities. And as many of you guys probably are well aware of, the, the job market right now is very tough to find people who will come in and do certain jobs. So let's give them more tools to be able to do everything we need them to do in a shorter period of time. Which makes me think about um, another customer of ours, which is Vivint Solar. And as they rolled out the iPad, what they were able to do is they were able to have solar technicians taking calls from rooftops, they were able to text back to schedulers to let them know if they were gonna be late for their next appointment and anything along those lines. But let's jump back to this transcript really quickly. So you'll see that, hey, this thing has just been going the entire time in the background for me. In addition to, if you see over here on the side with my um, relationship view, I've got all of these things that happened on previous calls. Here is the uh, past call purposes, things along those lines. But now what I want to do is I want to wrap up this call so that we can maybe get it. No, actually, before I wrap up, let's come over here. If you notice, I told you guys earlier that I was also a supervisor. So Mike is on this call. Um, of course, I've got one set up as my name as well. Let's go mute my side here. 
Let's come back to this. We'll go back here. So as you can see right here, you know, I'm I'm on the phone with Mike. He's calling because he's having troubles. But what if the customers say, this is amazing. Thank you very much. I am so glad that you offered me a part of your maintenance plan. And now as I'm a supervisor in here, I can come in, I can see things that are going on. I can view the call. Now I see this customer said that this was amazing. They were very happy. Now, if I were not the agent taking this call, I could listen into the call all the way over to barging in and taking over the call if I needed to. But if you notice, here's the full transcription the same way the agent was viewing it. The other thing that I wanna highlight for you guys really quickly is, as a supervisor, I also got these dial bot notifications. And so think about when you're away from the office, you're doing things that you wanna do, you can get all of this information brought directly to your, your mobile, which is if I look over here, I got all the same notifications right here on my mobile device as I do right here on my desktop app. So what we're trying to do with our contact center platform, our customer service platform, is just be helpful and help both the agents and the supervisors in their day-to-day -day work. So let's come back into this call. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. And if you guys would like to be able to, we can have dispositions. What this is going to allow you to do is this could have been uh, a account booked. I'll just say booked. And you'll be able to report on these things in the back end later. So if you notice, here's the call. We're calling because of the heating outage. If I needed to, I could jump in here. Of course, it opened on the wrong screen. Pull this over. Now, I can see the entire transcript for this call as, as a supervisor, manager, business owner, things along those lines. I can review all of this information. I can just come to see the call purpose. If I were to click right here on this call purpose, it'll take me to the moment inside of the recording where the call purpose was mentioned and also the moment in the transcript. So as we think about how these things are going to be helpful for you, I could come back in here and I could search for, what did I say, AC? So now it's gonna show me every place that AC was said, and I can come in and just find everything that I needed to find. From a leadership perspective, think about how important that could be if someone called in and said, you know what, I am not happy. I do not appreciate the way Tom spoke to me. Uh, Tom, I was on the phone with Tom the other day and he said X, Y, Z to me. Oh, wow, let me ask you this. Did you call in from the number that you're speaking to me on right now? Yes, I am. Okay, well, let's go take a look and see what we can find. So we're gonna pretend that Tom said the word was jump. So by typing that keyword in, I don't need 30 days. Let's just go back to the past last week. Let's apply this again. Now I can see all of the calls where that came up, but now I want to find, I'm not going to find Tom. I'm just going to find myself because it would be rude to find Tom, but I'm just going to come in and find myself here so that I can take a look. Okay, I don't have any for the past week, so let's go look at the past month. As you can see right here, here are the calls. I can just go in, I can click on these calls. Now here are all of the calls that happened, but if I wanted to nail it down to the customer who's complaining, now it's all of the calls where the word jump was said with this particular phone number that I can go through very quickly click on the AI. 
you notice, it's going to take me exactly to the spot in the conversation where I can find out, A, did one of my associates actually say this thing? Or B, how can I come back around to find this information? Even if my associate didn't say it, what can I offer up to this customer to make them happy? So that was our, our talk and our contact center and just a little bit of our analytics. But let's take a quick peek at some of the uh, settings so you can see how easy the system is going to be to manage. And then hopefully we can come back around and answer some uh, questions that you might have in those chats. If you notice from a settings perspective, it brought me directly to my information. Of course, all of this is um, set up by rules and the people you would like in your organization to have access to settings will be there. But as an administrator myself, I can come in here and I can look at users. If all of these users are in my office, I can click right here, I can add users. We're using Google uh, workspaces so I can add them for my directory. But if not, I could put in an email address. Wrong system. Let's try this. So, you see, I can't do this one, but needless to say, if I had it, I could come in, I could add people because I can see at the top, these are the licenses I have available to add, and I can move them as I would like to. But what about that contact center you guys saw? I've got it right here. If I scroll over to my support contact center, here are the centers that I have. If I wanted to change the language, maybe I needed a Spanish language for this one, I could select Spanish right here. And everything in my IVR and voicemail will be in Spanish. I have phone numbers associated with that contact center. That contact center I can send SMS from, both my primary number as well as my secondary number. If you wanted to be able to offer local numbers to your uh, people, if I needed to come in and add an agent. So now Tom's in here, he's his first day on the job. So I'm gonna give him a skill level of 10. So what that means is I am going to take more calls than Tom, Scott and Sean, but Scott's gonna take more than Sean. So think of skill level as being a proficiency level and you can figure out how you want people to come in and visit your organization. I can set up my time of day. Maybe you work a half a day on Fridays and you're closed Friday afternoons. <coughs> Excuse me. This could be summer hours or things along those lines. I've got open and closed. I have holiday routing. And then I also have this concept of the AI, which I was showing you. These are those assist cards that I have right here where I have programmed some of these keywords in that are going to trigger those pop-ups. And if you notice, I'll get the same pop-up for pricing inquiry. If I say price, pricing, how much is it? How much is that? And up to 70 more things because I want people being on message and on point each time that we have this conversation. And one of the things that we didn't talk about very much was these custom moments or moments. These are going to be items that maybe you want to run a report on later. So they're going to trigger in the background more so than on the front end. So with that being said, I am going to turn this back over to uh, Tom and Josh, and hopefully we can address some questions. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, obviously there was a lot to take in there. Uh, I think you know the goal of today is is just to help you understand what is out there in the collaboration and communication world. Um, and it's almost like, hey, I wonder if you know, as, as you look at your technology roadmap within your organization, um, you know, and and voice being a major part of that. You know, it's always nice to see what the capabilities are, how you could 
you know, use some of these uh, features and functions within your business. And obviously it's important to walk before you run. So you wanna make sure that you can do what you do today and do it well, but also know that the that you have the, um, the opportunity and uh, to scale and and expose new um, tools which can help your um, employees be more efficient and effective and also provide better uh, service to your to your customers um, so um, I, I guess my question you know from are there are there any questions and Ted did we get anything in chat um, along the along the way that we that we need to answer uh no we haven't had anything come in I, I know we had a couple of people join after we kicked off here but if you do have any questions uh you can type them into the question feature we'll give it uh we'll give it 30 seconds here to see if anything comes in uh i do yeah i do agree with you josh and, and tom and mike well done thank you definitely a lot to definitely a lot to take in in that regard uh, you know I, I think um you know if if you know as i said earlier josh is a and Avail Technologies is a member of our association. If you're interested in um, kind of having, you know, a more in-depth conversation with Josh on, you know, in the team at Dialpad on, you know, some of these capabilities and how they can help your organization, I definitely encourage you to uh, to consider reaching out to uh, to contact Josh in that regard. So um, let me check here, Josh, to see if anything came in. Okay. I'm not seeing anything, so I think at this point, Josh, Tom, Mike, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Josh, anything you want to just any final thoughts or comments before we do so? Yeah, just one final thought. And as you as you continue to you know um, process like those next steps, and and you know and um, but you're not quite sure what that could look like. As Ted said, feel free to reach out to me. You know, uh, today's uh, session was focusing on uh, collaboration and communication, but if there's other technology uh, areas and verticals that you all have questions on, um, feel free to reach out and you can just bounce some uh, some questions off me and and I'll do what I can to help. I've uh, been in the space for uh, 25 years and so um, and, and spent the last 10 years in the um, service industry space. Uh, uh, with a large mechanical contractor here in Pennsylvania. So I know some of the pain points um, that businesses face each and every day when it comes to um, technology and, and solutions. So uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Uh, my email, my number are on the screen here. And um, yeah, looking forward to possibly talking to you in the future. Awesome. All right. Well, Josh, Tom, Mike, I appreciate your, uh, your, your knowledge and expertise on the topic. And everyone else, thank you for joining us this morning and um, uh, we have our, we'll be sharing our upcoming webinar schedule with you to, to consider hopefully uh, attending again in the future. So with that being said, everyone have a great rest of the day. And again, thank you for uh, being a part of our, our webinar this morning. Goodbye.